The lazy daughter of the Yuqin family actually has a fairy fate, and it is said that she will be adopted as a disciple by the immortals, but who knew that Yulan Si's only wish in this life was to eat and wait for death? Cultivating immortality does not exist. It is impossible to cultivate immortality in this lifetime. Whoever loves to cultivate will cultivate it. Yu Qin Qin said, either marry Li Golu from the neighboring village, or go to cultivate immortality with the immortal. You can choose for yourself. Yulan Si. I choose to marry Li Golu. You diligent. Immortal. But later on. Yulan Si. True fragrance, P.S. The content of the previous seven chapters has been modified. Those who mind can take a look. What you don't want to see doesn't affect the subsequent reading. Finally, I would like to request a recommendation ticket and a monthly ticket, Momoda. Keywords of the novel. Jade Lazy Immortal with no pop-ups, complete collection download of Jade Lazy Immortal TXT, latest chapter reading of Jade Lazy Immortal. Chapter 1. Immortal Gate. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Immortal Gate Recently, an exciting news came from Shanyang Village. As the most famous and powerful cultivation sect in the Sun Kingdom, Tianyang Gate is admired by every mortal. I will come to Shanyang City in two days to recruit disciples. All children aged 5 to 15 years old are required to go to Yangqing to test whether they have Xianyuan. For all mortals, this is something worth valuing and uplifting. Its level of importance is even more lively than during the Chinese New Year. In five more days, the immortals of Tianyang Gate will come. It has been 300 years since we had a child from Shanyang village who had a fairy relationship. The last time the immortals came was when I was young. So this year, anyone who has reached the age must go for a test. The village head of Shanyang village struggled to shout on the large stone above the stone dam, and due to excitement, his already dark cheeks turned black and red. He is the only person in the entire village who has seen a fairy, and knows more than most villagers how happy it is to become a fairy. That must be a meal of rice, with meat in every meal. Otherwise, how could they all be raised white, tender, and handsome? The villagers below were also excited. Only some children who are not yet very sensible are forced to look at their parents who are happy on their own. But because the adults looked a bit fierce with excitement, we dare not say or ask. Many children also clap their hands with their parents, with a silly smile on their faces as they are forced to open their businesses. Yulansi yawned and showed no interest in the village chief's speech, lazily leaning against her own aunt. Yu and Yang was originally very excited, but seeing Yulan see like this, she shook her shoulder in anger and shook her away, saying fiercely. Listen carefully to the village chief's words, and you happen to be able to go before you reach fifteen. After speaking, she happily touched Yulansi's small face. My little one is well behaved, there must be a fairy tale connection. Yulan C. Dot. Mom, you're doing fortune telling, you definitely have it. She rolled her eyes and didn't take it to heart. My own auntie is good at everything, but she likes to nag and chat about the gossip of the whole village with the village lady under that huge yellow horn tree. Over the years, Yulan Si has also become a habit. When she first arrived in this world, Yulan Si was indeed very confused. Especially when I was working overtime tirelessly in the company the moment before, but the next second I lay in the arms of a woman, babbling and drinking milk. She was so shocked at the time that she almost suffocated to death with a sip of milk. She was about to spit it out right away, but the milky aroma made her instinctively swallow it. Ah, it smells so good. Accustomed to a busy life, suddenly transformed into a baby, still particularly idle. This feeling. It's really amazing. However, after calming her emotions, Yulansi also began to recall the past. I still remember that I was working overtime due to liver damage at the time, so much so that before fainting, I only felt a splitting headache, weak all over, and couldn't even make a sound, clearly a rhythm of overwork and death. 
But after becoming a baby, Yulan Si breathed a sigh of relief. After graduating from college, she didn't have a good rest. The heavy burden of her family, the pressure of life, and the desperate work made her constantly muster up her energy to cope. In fact, there is nothing to complain about. Everyone around us is in a high dot pressure state and dare not relax at all. She is the same, let alone as a female programmer, she is easily discriminated against. She has never given up and has never considered herself a woman in the workplace. Although she has achieved some success in her work and made life much easier for her family, she has never truly felt relaxed and happy for herself. Every day, it's two o'clock and one line at home in the company, and sometimes even overtime requires laying a floor in the company. These days lasted for five years. Although I don't know what to do with her life when she's no longer at home. But what can she do? She's already dead and living in another world, so she can only let go of her past troubles and start being a carefree little baby. Perhaps she died from overwork in her past life, but Yulan C felt deeply saddened and decided to enjoy life in this lifetime, lazy to death. She is really tired of the suffocating feeling of being overwhelmed by studying during her student days. I really dislike the endless classes and code that cannot be completed every day. Since heaven has given her the opportunity to become a new person and not leisurely enjoy life, how can she justify this difficult trip? Fortunately, Yulansi is the eldest daughter of Yuan Yang, who has been favored since childhood. Although she cannot live a life of great wealth and prosperity in the village. But it can also be considered as having no worries about food and clothing, no need to worry about being cold or hungry. I can often have some meaty and toothy treats, which is indescribably peaceful and comfortable in my childhood. Apart from occasional gossip, there are no other troubles in the small mountain village. The geographical location is good, the weather is favorable, and rural life is just like that. Our family only wants to test the immortal relationship with the Bao. Xiao Bao and Xiao Bei are too young, and Xiao Yu is only 16 years old this year. Your uncle's family has four children who can go for the test. If there is an immortal relationship, your uncle's family can also be considered to have made great strides. After the village assembly ended, on the way back, Yu and Yang pulled Yulan Si and started chatting with the family around her. As we were about to get home, Aunt Lan Hua from the same village happened to come over. Her eyes were first placed on Yulan Si's body, and then she said to Yu and Yang. Auntie Air, is Sisi going to test the immortal relationship? So what we discussed last time. Yu and Yang glanced at Yulan Si and said somewhat helplessly. I have to go, said the village chief. He personally escorted them over and went door dot to dot door to pick them up. Lan Si is not yet fifteen years old and must go. After speaking, let Yulan Si go back first. Yulan Si knew that Yuan Yang was telling Aunt Lan Hua about her marriage, although she felt that getting married at this age was a bit early. But most of the people in the village are around this age, and when they are ready to get married, they are already sixteen years old. As the village flower of this year, Yulan Si Zong has various shortcomings and is also a matchmaker who breaks through the threshold. Yulan Si's eldest daughter, Yuxiayu, happens to be almost sixteen years old, so she can be considered to have escaped a disaster without having to go on this trip. Yulansi was envious as she pushed open the door and walked in. Xiaoyu also walked in, looking a bit depressed and sighing, Auntie, I really envy that you can still go and test the fairy tale. Yulansi knows that her thoughts are different from others. The people here are quite interested in entering the immortal gate, and can even be described as fanaticism, after all, the mortals are free and unrestrained. Although many people do not have a concept of entering the immortal sect, they simply believe that once they enter the immortal sect, they can become a towering figure. Even the lord of Shanyang city must be careful to avoid offending them. What's the envy? Maybe it's just a waste of time. It's not so easy to have a fairy relationship. If it's really easy, how could Shanyang village not have a person with a fairy relationship for more than 300 years? Although Yulan Si felt that she was a traveler, 
perhaps she had a divine connection. But just thinking about the idea of being alone and leaving a foreign land after having a fairy fate makes me feel tired. Moreover, the world of immortals is completely different from those ordinary people. Yulan Si, who has already understood the rules here, really has no intention of moving. After all, I have read so many spicy cultivation novels, but I am very clear about the cruelty of the cultivation world. For example, killing and looting, for example, the law of the jungle, for example, having no friends. Just thinking about it makes me feel scared. A silly and sweet person like her with a blank mind would be tricked to death as soon as she leaves the novice village. She died once, and it can be considered as clear and honest. So what's the use of pinning? It's just a matter of hanging up, not even leaving a last word. After her death, the world she once lived in had nothing to do with her anymore, and only occasionally felt a sense of melancholy when recalling her former family. But in reality, people can still live without anyone. What's good about becoming an immortal? Without hesitation, there's a treasure that needs to be hidden. You still have to pretend to be a pig and eat a tiger, and be a low dot key person. For someone who only wants to be lazy to death, becoming an immortal is not meaningful. I heard that immortals are immortal and can maintain their youth forever, that's great. Although Yu Xiaoyu also knew that having a fairy relationship was not easy, he sat beside Yulansi and chatted with her. The children at home actually quite like Yulansi. Although Yulansi never goes out to do farm work much, she stays at home to take care of the children. The family leaves the children to her with great peace of mind, which is why Yulansi's two teams of siblings have no objections to her. Of course, even if they do, they do not have the right to speak. In this era of filial piety to parents, Yulan Si, who is highly favored by her parents, can also be considered a popular figure in the family. But children like her, which can be considered a natural talent. End of this chapter. Chapter 2 Testing Immortal Fate You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Testing Immortal Fate What's the use of living for so long? How tired! Yulansi said lazily as she lay on her rocking chair. Yuxiayu looked at Yulansi strangely and thought that her aunt was a famous lazy girl in the village, so she didn't say much. After all, her aunt would never stand at home if she could sit. Coincidentally, Aunt Yu has also returned. There was no expression on his face, and then he pulled Yu Xiaoyu to start working. After a while, the siblings also returned and threw the child to Yulansi before going to work. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, my aunt. In the next few days, all the adults and children in the village are waiting for the arrival of immortals, except for Yulansi. Of course, she was also a bit curious about the appearance of these immortals, but had no idea about testing their fate. If it weren't for the mandatory requirement this time, Yulansi would really not want to go out. Even though Shanyang city is so prosperous, she has stayed in even more bustling cities and there is nothing to be curious about. Of course, the most crucial thing is that transportation is really inconvenient. Communication relies mainly on shouting, while transportation relies mainly on walking. Occasionally extravagant, sitting on a cart can even scatter people, and the speed is also very moving. A few days later. Early in the morning, she was pulled out of bed by Aunt Yu, and after shaking Yulansi awake, Aunt Yu kept talking incessantly. It wasn't until Yulan Si got on the cart that Yu and Yang finally finished talking about it. In fact, the Yua family had no hope for their children to have a fairy relationship, but it wasn't that they didn't have any inner desire. It's just that things like Xianyuan are very elusive, and whether there are five in the entire Shanyang city is unknown. Spiritual roots are really a matter of fate. Come back early after the test, take care of Dabao, and don't run around. Don't cause trouble for the village chief, have you heard? Yu Auntie also carried Yu Dabao onto the ox cart, and later went to say something to the village chief. Later, Yulansi's father, Yu Diligent, also walked over, but not as capable as Yu Auntie. 
she just asked her to pay attention to safety and come back early. There was no mention of immortal fate at all. In the hearts of the Yu family, she and Yu Debeo went on a trip. Yulansi also thinks the same way, but her face is not very good and she hasn't woken up much. However, the village chief was filled with anticipation in his heart. After determining the number of people, the forty or so small and large radish heads in the village set off. This time, those who had cows at home were all pulled out, driving five ox carts with several adults watching from the side. After all, this is a cow, equivalent to a very resistant Chang'an Mercedes Benz from the previous life. For ordinary families, this is money for walking. Along the way, children chattered and chatted, most of whom were in Yangqing for the first time, so they were very excited one by one. Yulansi wanted to lie down, but the cart was very small and it was already not easy to sit down. And the speed is really slow, and the shaking is also very uncomfortable. Fortunately, I didn't have breakfast, otherwise I had to vomit. Almost most children haven't eaten it because their families have experience, and most of them will vomit after eating it. I could only yawn and look at the green mountain across from me, listening to the conversations of several fellow villagers on the ox cart. There were only two people on these two ox carts who were ten years old, one was Yulansi, and the other was the daughter of Aunt Lan Hua's sister. In. Law, named Li Li Hua. Although the name was rustic, she looked quite beautiful. I didn't speak much along the way, and my voice was also very small. Yulansi had no intention of speaking, and soon the passion of the little radish heads had passed. After all, it was almost noon and everyone's interest was not as high as when they first set off. Fortunately, it was not too far from Shangyang City. After walking for about half an hour, the children saw the city wall from afar and began to get excited again. The ox cart was unable to enter the city, so they drove it to the grassland outside the city, leaving a few adults to watch. The village chief led the children into the city. Those who are old enough to come to the village near Shanyang city these days, so there are the most children in the city these days. Therefore, the guards at the city gate are relatively strict. After entering the city, the village chief skillfully greeted the children and followed him along, with a constant stream of cries and various flavors on both sides. Yulansi nodded slightly. This mantu had a faint smell of milk. Unfortunately, she didn't bring any money. Eh, the tofu pudding looks so tender, but I don't have any money with me. Quickly, they walked past the disturbance and entered the open space in the western district. Many people had already arrived, and everyone was queuing to register the number of people. The village chief asked them to rest in place, and then took another person to register. As for when the immortal will come, no one knows. At this point, most of the children were hungry. After sitting on the empty ground, they took out the dry food prepared by their family and began to nibble on it. Yulan Si and Yuda Bao walked to a place next to the wall and swept the dust on the ground a little before sitting down. Yuda Bao looked quite obedient perhaps it was also his first time leaving home, and he was a bit scared, so he kept pulling at the hem of Yulansi's clothes. I'm sweating from pinching. Yulansi glanced at it and felt a bit toothache. Forget it, kid, you can understand. The two of them also had a simple meal, but before they could finish eating a cake, they heard someone exclaiming. Then they looked up together and saw several people flying over on the glowing object. Wearing white clothes and flying in the wind, he looks ethereal and worthy of the title of immortal. After the ferry landed, the people on the empty ground quieted down, and everyone looked curiously at the white fairies who had set up the platform. Although they couldn't see clearly, everyone tried their best to record this scene. Even if there is no immortal fate, one can still boast for a lifetime. Not to mention anyone else, Yulansi wished she could stand on tiptoe and take a look. Is it like what is said in novels or TV dramas, where men are handsome and women are beautiful, and old men are all pretty old men? Unfortunately, there were several adults in front of you, and they couldn't see clearly. Height also has limitations, it's really difficult. So he returned to the main queue, and the village chief had already arrived. 
He took them to queue up, and soon he was about to start testing the immortal relationship. As he stood in line, Yu Debeo once again tightly gripped the corner of Yulansi's clothes, his hands sweating profusely as he crumpled her hem. Yulansi simply pushed him in front of her and said, Stand in line in front of Auntie, Auntie can look at you like this. Yu Debeo wanted to say something more, but the village chief looked over and gestured for them to be quiet. As the team continued to advance, Yulan Si finally saw the operations on the stands through the cracks in the crowd. I could only vaguely see the immortal's hand raised, with a soft glow emanating from it. Although there seemed to be no one talking around, it could just be a buzzing sound, making it impossible for her to hear anything more from the stands. Anyway, I only saw a few children on stage and a few children off stage. A few children went on stage, a few children went off stage except for the light shining on the immortal's hand, there has been no change from the children coming on stage to the children coming off stage. Yulan C. Dot. Underscore. What is this doing? Going through the motions. So this is the test of immortality. Yulan pondered deeply, how could she have a feeling of not being rigorous? Isn't it mentioned in the novel that there are some spirit-testing beads, spirit-testing balls, and spirit-testing pillars? Just holding up one hand, is it constantly sour? Just as she was thinking this, the crowd suddenly exclaimed again. Yulansi instinctively looked over and saw a green light shining on one of the children's heads. Then she saw the group of immortals leaving the child in the stands, asking him to stand behind first. The child was still a bit at a loss, but someone could vaguely be heard saying. At that time, there was actually another child from Xiaoyang village who had a fairy fate. I heard that there was also one in Xiaoyang village ten years ago. Why doesn't our village have one? Some envy, some admire, some envy, and even some say they want to marry their daughter to Xiaoyang village. Yulansi. Wearing green on the head. It seems that if you want to live a decent life, you still need to wear a little green on your head. Wearing green on my head is like a fairy tale, and I have learned that, end of this chapter. Chapter 3 Bang! You are listening at Novel Full Audio. Chapter 3 Bang at the speed of this test, it was soon their turn to the children in Shanyang village. As a result, Yudabeo happened to be the last one in the previous batch. Yudabeo was a bit afraid of wanting to pull Yulansi, but the person above turned their gaze to Yulansi. Hurry up, you can go down and wait for my aunt over there later, Yulansi could only comfort him. Although Yudabeo was still very scared, seeing Yulansi standing in place watching him, he went up with peace of mind. So I went up for a while and then went down. The village chief, who was originally looking forward and nervous, has lost his expression. Quickly, Yulansi and the few little radish heads behind her stood up, feeling a bit awkward. She was the largest among the group to come up, and it caught people's attention. Sure enough, she stood up and the several immortals in the stands looked over, as if they were asking if she was over age. Of course, no one doubts that those who are over age dare to come up, after all, ordinary people dare not disobey immortals. After standing on the stage, Yulansi finally saw what was in the immortal's hand. Surprisingly, it is a circular jade pendant with some complex patterns carved on it. It is precisely these patterns that shine. The soft white light falling on the person was quite comfortable, and I was unconsciously attracted by this light. I am preparing to see more carefully how this pattern is drawn. Suddenly, bang, then it seemed like something was touching my face, so I quickly covered my face and stepped back. When I let go of my hand, I found that everyone's gaze was on me. The immortal in front of him still raised his hand, but the round jade pendant in his hand was missing, leaving only a rope. At this moment, the immortal stared at him with a bewildered expression, showing a hint of shock on his face. Yulan C. Dot. Sigma, degree degree, are you all looking at me, Daha? She has a good heart now. What about swelling? What did she do? Look at her. In front of everyone, Yulan Si couldn't help but recall whether she had done something unforgivable just now. 
degree degree, sleeping slot, I remember. When I came on stage, I couldn't help but let out a smoky fart, the kind that didn't make a sound. Shouldn't it have been discovered? Quiet. There was no one around who dared to speak in silence. The village chief's face turned white with fear. It's hard to imagine that such a black face could be so white, this is definitely the highlight of the village chief's moment. Village chief. It's over. Did the fairy's things be ruined by that lazy girl from the Yu family? He saw a purple light rushing out from the forehead of the daughter of the Yu family, and then the jade pendant shattered. Although Yulan Si had no expression on her face at this moment, she was feeling anxious inside. What about swelling? Will the immortal feel that she doesn't respect them? Hmm. That's not right. It's human nature to fart, why blame her? She once again shifted her gaze to the immortal's hand, leaving only one rope, is it difficult? Is it because of her that the jade pendant broke? Yulansi quietly glanced around. Sure enough, everyone was watching her. Lenovo's previous business. Grass, is it really impossible for oneself? This is a huge injustice. I can't beat her to death, can I? In the end, one of the older ones watched as the younger one walked over, looked at the red rope in the hand of the spirit root immortal, swallowed his saliva, and whispered. Let's test it again. I didn't see it clearly just now. Then he waved his hand to the person next to him and heard the city lord ask the several children next to him to come down. I can always see clearly by testing her alone this time. Yulansi's gaze was involuntarily drawn to the man in front of her, dressed in white and with a high crown of hair. Isn't it said that immortals are all very good dot looking? Why does this forehead still have acne? But just after she thought about it, she saw the immortal hand in front of her lift up, and an identical jade pendant appeared in his hand again. In order to measure clearly, he took two steps forward specifically. Almost slapped the jade pendant on her forehead. She couldn't help but take two steps back. The village chief was so frightened that he covered his small heart. Fortunately, the immortal didn't say anything. Yulansi looked at the immortal and then at the jade pendant. I suddenly don't know where to look. How about looking at his acne? Sensing that Yulansi was staring at the jade pendant, the immortal's head was covered in black lines. Look at the jade pendant said in a deep voice Yulan Si nodded honestly and said, Oh. Afterwards, wearing the jade pendant, my gaze and consciousness were indeed attracted again. Bang. At the same time as the explosion, Yulan Si covered her face. Very good, there's nothing on my face. I have the upper hand this time. She is really a clever little ghost. Oh, suddenly, there was another silence around. Looking through my fingers, there was indeed only one rope left. Yulan C. Dot. I step on a horse. Did she really do it? Shouldn't I really be beaten to death by the person in front of me this time? Yulan C. silently took two steps back, her heart trembling. I just said I shouldn't have come. If I had known earlier, I would have changed my age. Hasty. Don't mention him, the village chief is now devastated and his intestines are bruised. You shouldn't have let the lazy girl come, causing trouble. I don't know if Shanyang village will be angered by the fairy later. I don't know if anything will happen to this child. Yulansi let go and was already prepared to be hammered to death. It's just that. In no more than fourteen years, he will become a hero again. I really can't bear to let go of these days of eating and waiting for death. Junior brother, what's going on? The following immortals walked over one after another. I don't know what I'm thinking, but I'm worried that she might run away and surround her in the middle. Yulansi's face remained expressionless, but her heart was no longer just flustered. Grass and grass. Hammer, a soft and weak little cutie, surprisingly needs so many people. Is this the new trend of bullying in the city? How could the talisman explode? At first, the immortal frowned and said with suspicion, 
then his gaze shifted to Yulansi. Yulan Si was taken aback for a moment before slowly replying, I don't know either. Hey Fu. What the hell? Jade Pendant. What's the name? It's better to call it a Jade Pendant. After hesitating for a moment, he continued to ask. Are you going to hit me? Can you request a lighter touch? Immortal. Dot. Are we bandits? The expressions of several immortals became speechless. What makes her think they will hit her when she thinks they have such a ethereal image? I won't hit you, one of them couldn't help but say. Yulansi breathed a sigh of relief, then picked it up again and cautiously asked. So, do I have to lose money? No need, it's just a pendant made of blue jade and not valuable. You can keep it for now and retest it later. One of the fairies, who looked slightly older and lost, pondered for a while, but his voice was somewhat strange as he said. Mainly the second time he vaguely saw a touch of purple. But there is extreme uncertainty in my heart, fearing that I may have misread. I couldn't help feeling a little excited and excited in my heart, which led to strange expressions and sounds. Yulansi breathed a sigh of relief. I saved my life. It's great to still see Auntie. But since we want to stay, most likely we will still have a deep conversation with her because of this talisman. I just don't know if I want her to pay for it or if I'm selling myself. Yulansi walked silently to the child who had previously detected a fairy tale, feeling a bit complicated in her heart. If you want her to sell herself, should she resist and run away? Qingyu, Qingyu is also very expensive, isn't it? Could it be because I am a traveler, with too much knowledge in two worlds and an overly active mind that the talisman exploded? But she has been illiterate all her life, not even knowing a word, let alone learning knowledge. That means my brain is a little more active, is there anything wrong with it? Thinking this way, Yulansi's heart was no longer satisfied. Then, in a daze, he watched as the children in front of him continued to descend one after another, and surprisingly, he never found a child with a fairy-like fate again. Yudabeo stood beside the village chief, looking at Yulansi with some anxiety and worry, but he dared not come over. The village chief also had a worried expression, not only worried about whether Yulansi would offend the immortal, but also worried about whether they would offend Tianyangmen in Shangyang village in the future, and of course, worried about whether they could safely bring the children back. If it's because Yulan Si is alone that the whole village's children can't go back, that's really bad. A grand event of testing the fate of immortals came to an end in less than two hours. All the nearby villages that should have come have arrived, which means that there is only one in the entire Shanyang city who has a fate of immortals. The faces of the immortals were not very good, Yulansi thought to herself, afraid she might have hit the gun. As a result, when the immortals walked over, they didn't speak ill of or blame Yulansi, but rather took out a white jade carved talisman. Yulansi. Dot. If one's persistence is focused on studying, why can't they get into a 985 university? If she had this kind of energy in her previous life, Peking University and Tsinghua University would probably have no problem. Is it possible? It's unexpected, Yulansi said hesitantly, taking two steps back. Hmm. It seemed like she didn't expect to say that. The immortals glanced at each other and said, No, we still need to test. But you have to confirm before you can be satisfied, after all, purple represents what that is. Upon hearing these words, Yulansi could only helplessly say. If it explodes, would you really not hit me or sell me? Immortals. Dot. What kind of person does this girl see them as? They are immortals. How can they be so narrow dot minded? Besides, that talisman is not theirs. If it's useless, it's useless. Bang. As expected, the white jade pendant also exploded. But at this moment, the immortal's eyes lit up. I'm not mistaken, is it purple energy coming from the east? I'm not sure yet, but I can take it back and have the elder take it for testing. 
In a few words, it seemed that the three of them had already decided the direction of Yulan Si. But upon hearing them say so, Yulan Si frowned and said, What the hell, is this a fairy tale? Sure enough, people like her are equally excellent everywhere, but unfortunately, due to the poison of novels, she is not interested in the life of intrigue, killing, looting, fighting, and chasing after each other. Even eager to stay away from it. Do you have any unfulfilled wishes? After you finish, let's leave with us. The older fairy smiled and said kindly to Yulansi. End of this chapter. Chapter 4 Don't want to go. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 4 Don't want to go Yulansi. My wish is for world peace. Forget it, if you say it out loud, you might really get beaten. She saw several people looking at her with fiery eyes, knowing that her immortal fate was probably extraordinary. I shouldn't have been beaten. Access Road. Can I not go? As soon as Yulan Si uttered these words, several immortals quieted down again, looking at her with a surprised expression on their faces. People all want to become immortals, but most of them are mediocre in this world. But there are people who have immortal fate and are not as good as immortal paths, and it is unbelievable to say so. Is it okay? Is your brain dead? What are you saying? One of them asked incredulously. Can I not go? I have too many unfulfilled wishes, and I don't want to leave home. After Yulansi confirmed that they wouldn't hammer her, her fear of the fairy was much less. So she dared to say a few words to these people, didn't she see that even the city lord didn't say a few words to the immortals? Mom, she's drifting. Um. The few of them looked at each other, never expecting that the little girl in front of them might have excellent qualifications, but she didn't want to enter the path of immortality. This is awkward. Afterwards, the city lord pulled the village chief and Yu Debeo over very much. The village chief dared not speak to the immortals at all, and from a distance of five meters from them, he dared not come over. He just shouted excitedly at Yulansi. Miss you, do you have a fairy tale? Otherwise, why was she left behind by the immortals? After all, the immortals seemed to have no impatience with her attitude, and it was evident that this girl might have had great fortune. I used to worry about not being able to walk out of town, but now I have forgotten all about it. My mind is full of it. Lying trough. I send it to Shangyang village. Afterwards, I don't know how to talk about it. The immortals took Yulansi and the village chiefs back to Shangyang village. They felt that no matter what, they still needed to explain to her the benefits of entering the immortal path. Since she couldn't bear to part with her family, she simply let them persuade her. If it were ordinary people, they wouldn't even stoop to these places, but Yulan Si is quite special to them. Not only does it represent a generous reward, but with her qualifications, she is highly likely to be accepted as a disciple by that person. Build a good relationship early, maybe you can hold on to a golden thigh in the future. There are so many benefits that I don't even know how to describe them. Yulan Siwei is really the kind of qualification they think, a person can be worth hundreds or even thousands of ordinary disciples. No, even more special. The village chief was timidly brought back by the immortals, which immediately caused a sensation in Shanyang village. Yulansi was taken home, but the villagers crowded around Yuqin's house. The village chief was unable to enter, but instead told the people in the village about the situation. So. What, the lazy girl of you diligence family actually has a fairy fate? Are you going to be adopted as a disciple by the immortals? I took a deep breath. Yu Qinfen's family is about to develop. Envied, jealous, and resentful. Anyway, the people outside looked incredulous, but when the immortals came to visit, it was clear that they seemed to value the lazy girl who was diligent in her work. I didn't expect that the lazy girl who everyone thought couldn't get married to have such great luck. Many people are secretly hating why they couldn't marry this girl in earlier, just be lazy. Quickly, someone discovered Auntie Orchid in the crowd. 
It is said that Auntie Orchid's son fell in love with Yulansi and was planning to propose a marriage to the Yujia family. Now it seems that this marriage has gone wrong. However, no one said anything either. For a quasi-immortal who has a fairy-like fate in Shangyang village, everyone's heart is filled with envy, admiration, and disbelief. There are various complexities in their hearts, why aren't they my little ones? Ah! What's wrong with you, girl? Why don't you want to go yet? As soon as the immortals said that Yulan Si didn't want to go, Yuan Yang was the first to explode. This is such a great honor, no one can look up to it in the future. Although I don't understand how such a lazy girl from my own family could have a fairy fate, who knows exactly what fairy fate is, it may be because of this luck. However, Aunt Yu feels that her daughter is a bit lazy, but her luck is still quite good. After thinking about it, I feel that this dead child is not up to par. There is a fairy tale that doesn't want to go. How could that be? What a good thing. Yu Qin Fen also felt that Yulan Si's idea was not right, it was too ridiculous. But after returning home, Yulan Si's attitude became much more resolute. Going to cultivate immortality. It doesn't exist, it's impossible to cultivate immortality in this lifetime. Whoever loves to cultivate it will do so. Miss you, your qualifications should be excellent. If you enter the Tianyang Gate, I will definitely do my best to cultivate you. The fairy who first spoke to Yulansi saw that Yulansi was not moved, so she spoke up. They didn't expect her attitude to be so resolute when she returned. They thought the girl was worried about her family and wanted to talk to them. After returning, I actually didn't want to go anymore. Immortals. Dot. Lying down, hasty. It's better to just knock out and drag it away. Is this generation of disciples really bloated? The Yu family at least said that Yulansi didn't want to leave. In the end, Yu Qin pulled her face and for the first time in her life, she became angry with Yulansi. Either you go to cultivate with the immortal, or you marry Li Gulu from the neighboring village. You choose for yourself. Yu and Yang was startled. Didn't she say that he married a young man named Lan Hua? Why is Li Go still left? What are you talking nonsense about? Yu Qin Qin twisted her waist and said Yu Qin ignored him and just looked at Yulansi. Yulansi really started thinking seriously. Li Golu from the neighboring village had heard of him before. He was a hunter and his family had fields, but he liked to wander in the mountains without farming. The people in the village all say that he is idle and idle, and does not work properly. Reputation. Basically non-existent. But she thinks this is also quite good. If she doesn't farm herself, she won't be forced to farm in the future. If she knows how to hunt, she doesn't have to worry about not being able to eat meat. Although he is a bit of a slacker, it is said that he does not have any other bad habits. The most crucial thing is that Li Gulu often stealthily passes by her doorstep, and his eyes occasionally glance into the yard. He he, this guy specifically likes her. Sure enough, the charm of village flowers is irresistible. I choose to marry Li Golu. Yulansi punched heavily in her left heart and made such a happy decision. You diligent. Dot. Immortals. Dot. Does she have any misunderstandings about cultivating immortals? You family. Dot. This child shouldn't be foolish right. Everyone looked at Yulan Si with indescribable expressions on their faces. Later, Yu Qin turned around with a guilty expression and arched his hand at the immortal, who was neither decent nor aloof. He said, the immortals can take them directly. Our family has no objection. Yulan Si. Oh, dad, have you lost your sanity? Why did you say such crazy things? Before she could say anything, the immortals responded decisively with a good word. I've been waiting for this sentence for a long time. If I had said it earlier, it would have been over. It's grinding and chattering. Then Yulansi only saw someone waving her hand in front of her, and felt dazed as she collapsed. A fairy helped Yulansi avoid falling, 
but at this moment, the Yujia family looked at Yulansi with some reluctance. The child is unwilling to leave, they feel that she is not sensible. But when she really wanted to leave, and you couldn't help but wipe away a tear. It is said that once you enter the immortal sect, it is as deep as the sea, and after that, it may become difficult to meet. Well, please trouble the fairy, my daughter. Please take care of her more. Yu Qinqin's dark face also showed some reluctance at this moment. My elder brother, Sister Dotin Dot Law, and a few children used to be background boards, but seeing my sister Dotin Dot Law really leaving, my heart was also full of reluctance, especially the young children couldn't help but cry at this moment. My father Dotin Dot Law, you're welcome. With Miss Yu's qualifications, I believe we'll need her to take care of us in the future. After saying this, I glanced at Yulan Si, who was feeling a bit dizzy. Will it be their fault for being forcibly taken away by them in the future? Will they be hammered? I don't think so, what a good thing. When a few people walked out of the Yu family's house, the villagers outside scattered one after another, but then they hid from a distance and looked over. We looked at each other a few times, and their expressions were very complicated. This is the first time in their lives that they have encountered such a thing. There are still people who don't want to enter the path of immortality. If she is tired of the fighting and killing in the cultivation world, it is understandable that Yuan Shou is almost unwilling to enter the path of immortality again, but she clearly has a bright future. With such good qualifications, it would be a pity not to enter the path of immortality. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Entering the Immortal Gate You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Entering the Immortal Gate Almost as soon as the flying boat flew up to the clouds, Yulansi slowly regained consciousness. Before, she suddenly had a feeling of being out of the clouds and mist. That kind of feeling is quite enjoyable, just like the feeling of dozing off in class in the afternoon when I was a child. As soon as she opened her eyes, Yulansi was still a bit confused. After a while, a few immortals sitting not far away seemed to be discussing something. Yulansi yawned and inexplicably wanted to experience the feeling of dozing off. But looking at it, she also knew what kind of situation it was now. I silently sighed inwardly. Oh, oh, I didn't expect you Qinfen to be so diligent. However, at this point, she did not make too many fearless reactions. Since they have all been taken away, any reaction from her is useless. Moreover, Tian Yangmen is said to be far from Shanyang village, at least this distance is very unfriendly to ordinary people. If it's just walking from Shanyang village to Tian Yangmen, it's probably a long, long walk. So Yulan Si simply propped her head up and listened to the chat of several immortals. Let's just take her back like this. What if she wakes up and causes trouble? The fairy who started talking to Yulansi scratched her head. There is still a hint of distress. But she has such good qualifications, it's a pity not to bring her back, the only fairy couldn't help but speak up. Their favorite thing for those who are responsible for recruiting new disciples is to encounter disciples with good qualifications. After bringing them back, they can not only obtain more cultivation resources, but also form good relationships with these qualified disciples. Maybe they can also have some luck in the future. Forget it, let's go back first. Anyway. The older fairy had just mentioned this when suddenly Yu Guang saw Yulan Si, who was propping her head up and listening to them speak. Sigma, degree degree, I saw that she didn't have too many expressions on her face, but that look gave the impression that they were discussing someone else no matter what. But then he was suddenly startled and said, How did you wake up? After finishing speaking, he continued to ask, When did you wake up? After speaking, he also glanced at the green light child behind Yulansi. The green light child was afraid of heights, so the immortals cast a spell to make him sleep with him. Watching the green light child not wake up, I breathed a sigh of relief and looked at Yulan Si with even more curiosity. I've been awake since you started discussing me, Yulan Si replied honestly. She's an honest baby, so they can't feel like they're eavesdropping. When she woke up, 
it was clear that she was listening attentively. So my face is straightforward. Immortals. Dot. Dot. Is it so straightforward? After being speechless, they were also secretly surprised. Although they had not yet built a foundation, their strength during the qi cultivation period was not something that small mortals could easily break free from. But Yulan Si not only broke free from their spells, but the interval was not long. From when they left the Yu family and flew to the clouds, there was not even half a burning incense in total. If ordinary mortals were to return to Tianyang Gate, they would probably not have been sober yet. So although the few people didn't speak, they were all thinking inside. Is this the difference between genius and ordinary people like them? Afterwards, a few people looked at Yulan Si and didn't speak at all. The spirit boat wasn't too big, but they weren't too crowded on it either, so the distance between the two sides was two meters wide. Afterwards, Yulan Si saw that they didn't want to talk and felt lazy and didn't want to move. I still feel a bit regretful that my family seems to have stewed meat, but unfortunately I didn't eat it and was taken away. Leaning against the edge of the spiritual boat, my eyes turned towards the outside. There was a faint halo enveloping the spiritual boat, so even though it flew quite fast, I couldn't feel any wind. After watching for a while, I fell asleep again in a daze. After seeing Yulansi close her eyes and breathe steadily, several people inexplicably breathed a sigh of relief. I don't know why, but they always feel a strange feeling when they look at Yulansi after knowing her qualifications. She seems very different from other mortals. They are at least respectful to the immortal, not to mention their sincerity and fear. She didn't seem to show much fear and awe from the beginning. Even if there is a look of fear, it seems a bit fake. Their heads are so ironclad that they all doubt whether ordinary people nowadays have any misunderstandings about immortals. Not long after, several large mountains of Tianyangmen appeared in front of everyone, and the immortals breathed a sigh of relief. Along the way, they dared not relax even when they saw Yulansi sleeping soundly. I charged with all my might. Even intentionally cast spells on her when she was about to wake up, feeding her a few pi gu dan midway. I'm afraid she might wake up and everyone would be embarrassed. After all, Yulan Si's qualifications are too good, and I'm also afraid of encountering some inconspicuous sex to steal. Their cultivation level is not high, and if they really encounter experts in the foundation building period, they are not opponents. The spiritual boat landed steadily on the open space outside the Tianyang Gate. Not far away, there were disciples of the Tianyang Gate practicing swordsmanship. When they saw them returning, a few people surrounded them. Senior brother Song Chun, are you back so soon? The person said to the fairy who was first talking to Yulan Si. Song Chun nodded and immediately glanced at Yulan Si, who was still sleeping behind her. Hey, are there two new disciples? After speaking, he walked over to Yulan Si in green light, but didn't say much. After being awakened by someone, Yulan Si quickly regained consciousness. Seeing several unfamiliar immortals gathered around him, he stood up lazily and stretched his waist, then stepped out of the spiritual boat. Looking left and right, he found himself standing on a huge platform, which seemed to be halfway up the mountain. However, there were also some people wearing white clothes practicing swordsmanship not far from the white marble slabs all around. TSK TSK, what can only be seen in fairy tale dramas can actually be seen with one's own eyes. Sister you, let me take you to see the elder. Since the person has brought it back, they must register first before they can receive the reward. However, the qualification of Yulansi definitely needs to be personally tested by the elder to the leader, and what will happen afterwards depends on Yulansi's nature. Song Chun thought that Yulan Si was unwilling to enter the path of immortality before, and was afraid that she would not be willing to accept his feelings. But seeing her calm demeanor, I feel a bit confused about what she really thinks. Then several immortals followed along and prepared to take Yulansi to meet the elder. Yulansi casually followed, but only took a few steps. Someone suddenly said behind him, 
senior brother Song, there is still a child on the spiritual boat. Green light child. Dot. Fortunately, I was still asleep, otherwise it would be so awkward. Song Chun and others. Dot. I almost forgot. After waking up the green light child, the child looked around with some fear, and then saw Yulan Si, who was also a mortal. Perhaps he felt that both of them were in the same situation, so he followed Yulan Si's side. Yulan Si glanced at the little radish head and asked, What's your name? My name is Lu Xiaoqiang. Yulan Si. Dot. This name is a bit perfunctory. However, there were not many cultured villagers in the village, and most of their names were given by animals, such as their niece Yu Xiaoyu and the neighboring villages Li Golu. Most children did not have big names and were given nicknames. As for the origin of Yulan Si's name, it is said that Yu Qinfen felt that she was too lazy, and several times she didn't get angry and said to her, You're so lazy, why don't you just call yourself lazy? But Aunt Yu disagrees. How could her little daughter call such an unpleasant name? So I took a pun. Oh, don't worry. Fortunately, she is too lazy to care. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Apprenticeship You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Apprenticeship It took Yulansi a long time to walk into the White House not far away. After entering, Yulansi realized that the house was actually built with white jade. I was shocked to find that the cultivation world is really rich, and houses are built with white jade. However, when I think that the square outside is all paved with white jade, I estimate that this white jade is not very valuable anymore. Of course, she didn't understand this at first, so after touching it, she followed in. There is a faint scent of sandalwood in the main hall, with an incense burner in the middle emitting white smoke. Yulan Si did not look around, after all, she was also a knowledgeable person. Lu Xiaoqiang looked around curiously, then lowered his head and closely followed Yulansi. Elderly, register two new disciples from Shangyang City. Song Chun walked in and headed straight towards the left side of the main hall. Li Dawei sat in front of the office desk, holding a book in his hand and reading it. He glanced at Song Chun and others, then at the only two new disciples and frowned slightly. Only two. After speaking, he put down the book and took out a booklet from the side. Later, Song Chun revealed the names of the two individuals and other simple information. Elderly used his fingers as a pen to melt the information on the booklet, and then casually rolled it up. Two round-shaped jade pendants were taken out of the drawer again, and just as they were about to engrave information on them, Song Chun suddenly spoke up. Elderly, Sister Yu's qualifications still need to be retested. Li Dawei paused for a moment. Originally, it was quite easy for two ordinary disciples to get started, but Song Chun appeared so serious. Not only him, but also the others behind him had a cautious expression on their faces. Oh. Li Dawei was quite interested. It seems that this Yulan Si's qualifications are not ordinary, right? He has been responsible for enrollment for so long and has been disappointed many times. He has hardly encountered anyone with superior qualifications, most of whom are average or below average. So I became somewhat interested in Yulan Si and stood up and walked over. Glancing at Lu Xiaoqiang next to him, I knew he was a single wood spirit root, but unfortunately his qualifications were mediocre. Such qualifications were not good and could only be considered average. On the other hand, it seems that Song Chun did not provide a definite test result for the nearby Yulansi. Li Dawei flipped his hand and a transparent bead appeared, which looked more advanced than the talisman held by Song Chun and his companions. The bead is actually transparent, like a glass bead the size of a fist. Yulansi looked at the big shot with a bewildered expression on her face. I know it definitely needs to be retested, but what is this glass bead for? This is a spirit bead, which can more specifically determine what kind of spirit root it is. Song Chun saw Yulan see curious and explained to her with a smile in order to gain favor. 
Yulansi nodded and thought to herself that this should be a high dot end product. Isn't it awkward to finally test that one's weakness is not related to immortality? However, this time Yulansi took the initiative to take a few steps forward and walked up to the Lingju. Li Dawe didn't expect this girl to have no fear at all. I was slightly surprised, then manually activated the spirit bead and solemnly pressed it onto Yulansi's forehead. Yulansi. Dot. Lie down, when you come over, at least let me know. Her subconscious mind rolled back and almost fell to the ground. As she tilted her head back, Yu Guang seemed to see the spirit bead burst out with a purple glow, which grew stronger and stronger. Click, did it explode again. Li Dawei quickly regained his spiritual power, and the spirit bead was covered in cracks all around, but at least it did not explode. However, this spirit bead has been destroyed. Originally, these spirit beads were meant to test special spirit roots such as wind type and ice type, as these spirit root talismans cannot be detected. But at this moment, he didn't feel regretful. Instead, he became excited and walked towards Yulansi, perhaps feeling a bit uncomfortable, whether he had not grabbed her or not. But he said to Song Chun behind him, make him an identity card. He pointed to Lu Xiaoqiang. Lu Xiaoqiang shrank his body and hid behind Yulansi. The next second, Li Dawe grabbed Yulansi's collar and flew outside. Yes, Yulansi found herself being carried by someone with clothes behind her neck and flew out of the hall. Oh oh zero, slash sleeping slot do I want face. At least she's also a girl. Yulansi's collar was being carried by someone, but at first she didn't react. After realizing it, I didn't dare to struggle. Now, I can't even maintain my image. As a result, Li Dawei carried her and flew directly to a larger mountain behind her. There was no direct path from the bottom of the mountain to the top, only a huge square halfway up the mountain, surrounded by steep rocks. There are several huge temples located near the mountain wall of the square. Yulan Si is not good at evaluating the architectural style of Tianyangmen. She only thinks that the people here seem to like big houses very much. And the bigger you are, the more you like it. The bigger it is, the more powerful it seems. The two of them stopped in the square, and Li Dawe only then let go of Yulansi. Without much time to say to her, he walked directly towards the middle hall. After entering, Yulansi realized how big the square was and how big the hall in front was. Not only that, but only after landing did I carefully see that there seemed to be houses on top of this mountain and occasionally some places were not very visible, as they were blocked by clouds at a high altitude. Of course, the visual effect alone also made Yulansi exclaim that it is indeed a fairy world, and it can be seen everywhere with exquisite craftsmanship. Perhaps it was because I had seen so many amazing special effects in my past life that the scenery in front of me didn't feel too surreal. After all, it's too meticulous, there will always be a small flaw. Li Dawei hurried forward, while Yulansi slowly followed behind. What was she doing in such a hurry? Although she didn't know what Li Dawei was going to do, it didn't hinder her from enjoying the beautiful scenery around her. In fact, standing in this huge square still gives one a feeling of insignificance. This world seems to be much larger than the ball in the previous life. Just this high mountain peak can be vaguely seen around. Not far away, one can still see disciples of the Tianyang Gate practicing, some sitting on the edge of the floating stones meditating, and others practicing. They are not too curious about Li Dawei and Yulansi. In fact, after entering the Tianyang Gate, my thoughts are different from those of Yulan. She thought that no matter what, it would still be like in fairy tale novels, with some tests for beginners. As a result, it seems that after bringing it back and recording it, he became a member of the Tianyang Gate. It made her feel a bit unbelievable to be hasty. Just as he was thinking about it, he saw Li Doe standing at the entrance of the main hall calling out to him. Yuxieu, hurry up, the leader wants to see you. Before he could speak, a middle dot aged man with a very dignified appearance walked out. Yulansi could only accelerate her pace a little helplessly, 
but she didn't run over as quickly as Li Dawei had imagined. The middle-aged uncle's expression did not change much, but his eyes were slightly surprised by Yulan Si. Is this still a mortal? Isn't his immortal's authority useless? Or have ordinary people changed now? Yulansi didn't understand the etiquette of the cultivation world, and she didn't know how to address the other person. After passing by, she silently said, Hello, master. When Li Dawei seemed to be about to say something, the leader nodded and said, Come in. After Yulan Si walked in, she saw that the main hall was higher than what she had seen before, and the decoration inside was also more refined. However, there was an empty space on the right side of the hall, with nothing around it, but there was a transparent crystal column about two meters high in the middle. At a glance, Yulan Si knew that the spiritual pearl was probably broken off from this crystal pillar and coiled in a round shape. The leader walked over in diameter, gesturing for Yulan Si to follow. Yulan Si walked over, and the master's hand shook the crystal pillar slightly. Suddenly, a faint light appeared on the crystal pillar. Yulan Si suddenly realized that this thing was indeed a large spiritual pearl. This large crystal pillar looks very secure. Thinking so in my heart, my feet unconsciously walked over. Then he stared at the crystal pillar and was suddenly pinned down by the master's head. In an instant, the crystal pillar emitted a very strong purple light, which shot straight into the clouds, as if it was about to break through the ceiling. However, at this moment, Yulansi had no intention of paying attention to these things. She only felt a sudden needle piercing pain in her head. Fortunately, this pain came and went quickly. Of course, there is a bit of pain in the forehead. This headmaster, who looks like a principal, really doesn't know how to take care of children. After the pain disappeared, the light on the crystal pillar suddenly disappeared. On the contrary, the head's originally serious expression also became stunned, and Li Dawei was already shocked and couldn't come to his senses. After a while, the leader finally regained his senses. His aptitude could no longer be described as superior, it was simply top. Notch. Still the most powerful fighter, railing in, with top.notch qualifications. If this kind of qualification is well cultivated, it will be the next generation of the god of war in the Tianyang sect. However, this shock still made him unable to calm his emotions. Instead, he tried to raise the corners of his mouth slightly, trying to show a very amiable look. Would you be willing to worship me as his teacher? But the more you want to laugh, the more frightening your expression becomes. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Fulong Zun Shang You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 7 Fulong Zun Shang Yulansi Oh, oh lying in bed, this leader has a terrifying expression. Before she could respond, Li Dawei walked forward and exclaimed in surprise, Master, the thunder spirit root is on the Fulong Zun. Why? Of course, the leader also thought of Senior Fuling, but like his name, Senior Fuling is cold and difficult to get along with. As there have been no disciples of the Thunder Spirit Root, he has never received any disciples. Also, because he is cold and has an unpleasant personality, there are not many peers in the sect willing to interact with him. Nowadays, it is quiet and indifferent, not stained with dust, and even less willing to deal with people. The leader is worried that such a good seedling will not be properly nurtured by Fulong Zun. If it is not nurtured properly, what will happen? After all, with such good qualifications, it will definitely become the backbone of the sect in the future. Furthermore, if a little girl were to be developed into a cold and aloof personality, how bad it would be. So, it's okay if he works hard for a while. Cultivating a disciple with good qualifications can be considered as adding bricks and tiles to the sect and making contributions in the future. He is not afraid of hard work. Such a good seedling is a waste of money for that servant Fulong. As a leader, it's important to step forward at such times. With this thought in mind, the leader straightened his back and said, Fulong Zun has been in seclusion for a hundred years. I don't know when he will leave. 
such a good seedling should be well cultivated. As soon as the words fell, a person quietly and invisibly walked into the door. Yulan Si looked at the two as if she were an outsider, and then she happened to see the third person in the afterglow. The leader also saw it and then silently closed his mouth, as if the person who had just emitted the highlight was not him. Yulan Si. Dot. Li Dawei was even more afraid to move. Fulong Zun had a high status and strong strength in Tianyang Gate, and even standing next to him felt a numbness from being electrocuted. So pretending not to hear the master's words, I looked up at the patterned flower on the windowsill. Hey, I didn't notice it before. This patterned flower is really beautiful. As soon as the leader finished speaking, he helped Cold Lord to close the door, but he came knocking on his door. Although the light of the spirit measurement is shrouded in the main hall, it is normal for Fulong Zun to have a sense of thunder-type spiritual roots. At first, he thought that the other party would definitely not be able to come out of seclusion. Even if he found out later, Yulansi had already worshipped him as his teacher. Even if Fulong Zun wanted to be strong, he would not surrender his identity. Fulong Zun walked slowly up, and the first thing Yulansi noticed was his white hair, but this face was actually in his thirties. Not only does it not look old, but there is also a feeling of a cool and handsome uncle. Actually, calling someone an uncle is not very appropriate, after all, their appearance in their thirties still looks very young. However, since they are all called respected, Yulansi estimated that she should be quite old. I just don't know how old I am. Fu Ling Zun walked up and looked at the leader expressionlessly, then said two words coldly to Yulan Si, Master. Dot. Underscore reasonably speaking, when it comes to apprenticeship, Yulan Si would rather agree to the leader. After all, the leader still smiled and said it to herself. Even if the smile was a bit scary, it could still be considered as expressing her goodwill. And the appearance of Fu Leng Zun being both reasonable and rejecting people thousands of miles away made her feel a bit scared. Unfortunately, the situation is stronger now. After Fu Leng Zun came over, the leader seemed to have stopped speaking. Even when Fu Leng Zun mentioned the word apprentice, he did not refute it. So I have no reason to refuse. The leader's expression was also very helpless. Although he really wanted to take Yulansi as a disciple, currently only Fulong Zun is most suitable. It is estimated that there is only one thunder-type spiritual root superpower like Fulong Zun in the entire Sun Kingdom, and his strength is also top.notch in the Sun Kingdom. Even if he couldn't see Fulyang's cultivation now, it must be higher than the cultivation period. Therefore, the leader could only helplessly watch as the disciple he wanted to recruit was taken away by Fu Liang. It can only be said that the movement is too slow. If it is detected, immediately ask Yulansi to apprentice, maybe she can take the lead. The leader touched his chin and finally sighed regretfully. He waved his hand to let Li Dawei go back first, and then recruited his own little disciple. Master, are you looking for me? I happen to have no time to walk in while meditating on the side. The leader felt some comfort in his heart when he saw the young disciple. Although he had not received many disciples in recent years, each one had excellent qualifications, and most of them had a good temperament and a gentle personality. On this thought, he felt a bit regretful about Yulan Si. Uncle Fulong has taken in a new disciple, please take good care of him, and you also know the temperament of Fulong Zun. The leader thought that such a good seedling should not be cultivated into a cold and indifferent one. Let his disciples influence and influence him, and maybe he can save it. Oh, that's the girl brought by elderly just now. I naturally saw it before I had time, but I didn't take it to heart. I didn't expect this girl to be a lay-type spiritual root, and she was even taken in by Fu Ling Zun, which made me a little more curious. Although Fulong Zun is not a cold spiritual root, his icy appearance still makes Yulansi feel a little cold. Well, maybe it's not an illusion. On such a high mountain, she's wearing a single coat. If she were at the foot of the mountain, she might not feel cold, but she wouldn't be as happy at the top of the mountain. 
The residence of Fu Leng Zun is actually on the nearby mountain top, which is even steeper than the previous one. In other words, a piece of land has been cut out at the top of the mountain, and several houses have been built without even seeing a few trees. Oh, there are still some, they look strange and resistant at first glance. It can be imagined how harsh the environment here is, and the most crucial thing is the cold. Yulan Si held her shoulders and was carried by Fulong Zun, flying in mid-air. However, she didn't say much or shout irrationally. Although she was indeed afraid in her heart, as an adult, she knew very well what it meant to judge the situation. The most crucial thing is that it is obvious that Fu Ling Zun has no intention of speaking up. Landing in front of one of the houses, Yulansi felt a chill in her heart. The house looks nice to repair, but it's empty and empty all around. There are only a few roads paved with white jade, connecting somewhere unknown. You live here, Fulong Zun pointed to the room in front of him, and Gao Leng stopped saying a word before turning around and leaving. Just. Let's go. Yulansi was stunned as she watched the graceful hem slowly turn, blocked by stones, and then disappear. The whole person couldn't help but let out a long sigh. At this moment. Goo. She is hungry. I changed several places in a row, tossed and turned, and was carried twice by someone. At this moment, her feet did not tremble, which can be considered as having good psychological qualities. If it weren't for flying and jumping, I would probably be like Lu Xiaoqiang by now. Of course, now entering a new map, she definitely won't be as comfortable as at home. She has never gone hungry when she comes to this world, and even if she doesn't eat well at home, she is still fully fed. On the first day of leaving home, I miss my mother, miss my mother, miss my mother. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Flawless you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 8 Flawless slowly ascending the steps, walking to the door of the house, he reached out and pushed. I just felt a cold wind blowing by, but fortunately there was no strange smell inside the room. It seemed like no one had lived in it for a long time, and there was some dust inside. However, looking around the room, Yolansi felt even more desolate in her heart. A bed, with nothing on it except dust. A wardrobe with a layer of dust on top. A table, a chair, there is also a study on the side, which has a bookshelf in short, simple decorations are really nothing. She just wants to clean, but there's nothing for her to do. Moreover, now it's cold and hungry, and I feel so aggrieved in my heart. Although everyone had said they didn't want to enter the path of immortality, ordinary people said it was good. She didn't feel that good, but instead felt a chill in her heart for her future miserable days. The days of eating and waiting for death may be gone forever. Underscore, there was no way to sit inside the room, and Yulansi could only sit on the steps, pondering whether to find the master or just sit and wait for him to come and find her. Thinking about it, Yulansi was too lazy to move. Some people just have a lot of thoughts in their minds, but they just don't want to take action. She belongs to this kind of person who thinks a lot in her mind but is too lazy to move. So I really sat on the steps feeling cold and hungry, the more I thought about it, the more aggrieved it became. However, not long after, a subtle movement was heard. A man in white fell next to a strange rock not far away. Yulansi lifted her head, with no excessive expression on her face, mainly because she was too lazy to smile. Is Junior Sister the newly recruited disciple of Fulong Zun? Without time to see her look up, she spoke up. But looking at her expression, I don't know why, I always feel pitiful. Then, when I thought about the personality of Fu Ling Zun, it suddenly became clear. I'm afraid that Fu Ling Zun left her here as soon as she came back. Newly recruited disciples have to go outside to collect daily necessities and supplies. This mountain peak is steep, and ordinary people have no way to leave. With this thought in mind, I had no time to sympathize a little more with Yulansi. After walking over, I said. Elderly has prepared your identity card, haven't you received your daily necessities yet? 
Yulan Si nodded when she saw him walking over and said, no. She also wanted a chance to claim it. Then I'll take you there. I feel sorry for her even though I have no time. Although I have learned from a great master of the sect, not everyone can tolerate this great master's temperament, let alone Fu Ling Zun who has already opened up a valley, so naturally I don't pay much attention to the details. Thank you. Yulansi stood up and smiled, expressing gratitude to the young man who had shown kindness to her. However, the young man in front of me really fits the fairy-like image imagined by Yulan Si. Looking closer, there were no pimples on my face, and I couldn't even see my pores. Although my facial features were not very handsome, combined with that smile, it gave me a gentle and humble feeling. It can also be considered a handsome guy, although I don't know how old he is, he looks like he's only 18 or 19 years old on the surface. You should call me senior brother. I have no time to write, I don't know how to call junior sister. Seeing her smile, I had a bit more of a liking for her. This junior sister is quite polite, so it's not difficult to get in touch with her. Yulan C. Then I'll call you junior sister you. I have no time to know that most ordinary people have surnames, but after entering the immortal sect and becoming a disciple, the master will start writing characters. Even many immortals have no surname. Seeing that she seemed a bit cold, she had no time to cast spells around her and set up a barrier to isolate the cold outside. In an instant, Yulansi felt as if she wasn't cold anymore. This flawless senior brother was quite discerning. She didn't appear very cold in front of him, but was noticed by the other party. Let's go then. Taking care that Yulansi cannot fly, he is not yet proficient in wielding swords, so he took the spirit boat gifted by his master during the Qi cultivation period and went directly to the outer peak. While flying, he introduced Yulansi to him. That is the outer peak, where you need to go to collect the necessary supplies every month. This is the Aulai peak, and I live here. Fulong Zun has a cold personality, and due to his cultivation, your side is the Thunder Ring Peak. As well as the other peaks, they are all the places where the elders of Tianyang Gate live. Some who like to be lively also live in the Aulai Peak. That's where the leader used to live. Aulai Fong is the largest and most scenic among the surrounding peaks, and the green environment above is much better than Lei Huan Fong. In Yulansi's view, the development conditions are also more mature than the other peaks. Landing on the large square of the outer peak, most of the disciples of the outer peak have average qualifications and it is difficult to join the master's sect, but there is also a chance. There will be major competitions and tests in the sect, and if they are outstanding, they will be valued and accepted as disciples by the inner sect elders or superiors. Li Dawei received an idle message and prepared everything that Yulansi needed. Yulansi returned to the main hall of the outer peak again, but did not see Song Chun, Lu Xiaoqiang, and others. Obviously, it has already been arranged, it's really different fate for the same person. Although Lu Xiaoqiang has poor qualifications, he was arranged early and clearly. Maybe he has already had his meal now. Worshipping a master as a teacher is obviously not perfect either. Fulong Zun has a cold temperament. If you lack anything, just send me a message, Li Dawei said and handed Yulansi a message jade slip. Unfortunately, if you want to use it, at least you need to practice one layer of qi. However, Li Dawei is very confident in Yulansi and believes that with her qualifications, not to mention bringing qi into the body in three days, there will be absolutely no problem for at least a week. You should know that many people with average qualifications will introduce air into the body within a month. After Yulansi accepted it, she took the storage bag given to her by Lidoe, which also needed to be inserted into her body before she could use it. So this forces her to put in effort. This time alone, Yulansi felt that once she got married, she would love someone. Maybe even if we see her not working hard, we can send her back. After receiving her belongings, I had no time to take her to the cafeteria in Waifong for a meal. Yulansi packed several mantu to take back to eat. I don't know whether she can eat them in the past two days. Later, 
I will help Junior Sister take out what she needs. There is a Pigu Dan inside, so there is no need to bring these foods back. After Yulansi had packed the things, she smiled and said. Yulansi. Dot. I didn't say it earlier, but the Pigu pill doesn't smell like Mantu. Shushin World is indeed worthy of Shushin World. Mantu tastes delicious. Sitting on the flawless flying boat again, he returned to Lei Huanfen. Without time to see her shrink, he quickly covered her again. Then she put out all the things in her storage bag, and with a dust removal technique, the dust inside the room disappeared. Yulan Si's eyes lit up, this spell is amazing. Senior brother Wu Ming is really amazing. Yulan Si's words are sincere. Wu Xia couldn't help but smile and said, when my junior sister practices the third level of qi, this small spell can be easily used. Yulansi remained silent. She had originally planned to work hard until the first level of qi cultivation, but silently set her small goal to the third level of qi cultivation. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Arrangements You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Arrangements The house has been tidied up and there is no time to help Yulansi move everything in. As for neatness, Yulansi will have to do it herself. After all, it is a woman's boudoir, and even in the cultivation world where male and female defenses are not strict, he is not good at helping. Since that's the case, I won't disturb junior sister you anymore. Thank you very much, senior brother Wu Ming. Yulansi said with a graceful smile, arching her hand. Seeing her perform an indecent gesture, I had no time to ask for a smile, and my liking for her increased a bit. This junior sister doesn't look like she was born into a farmer. She is elegant, polite, and handles things with moderation. You don't need to be overly careful when interacting with her, nor do you need to feel embarrassed. Getting along is quite easy. At first, he was just curious, and his master asked him to take care of him. He only intended to take care of a few things, but now he feels that maybe he can have more contact. When I turned around and left, the clouds outside seemed to thicken, and I couldn't even see Aulai Peak clearly. When flying up to the clouds, I turned my head and glanced at Lei Huanfeng. At this point, Lei Huanfeng was already covered by clouds and mist, and the weather seemed a bit gloomy. It was estimated that it would rain soon. So I quickly returned to Aulai Peak. As soon as I landed, I saw my master standing at the entrance of the main hall, looking towards the direction of Lei Huanfeng. Unfortunately, the summit of Lei Huanfeng had already been covered by clouds and mist. Master, I have no time to bow and salute as a disciple. Have you arranged it properly? The leader raised his hand slightly and asked with a smile. Although the national character face is very majestic, smiling still gives me a shivering feeling in my heart. Master, it's really not suitable to smile. With such a majestic face, it's so scary when you smile. The arrangement is done, said Yushimi calmly, who had long been accustomed to it. After pondering for a moment, she continued, I'm afraid Yushimi has not yet been enlightened. The leader nodded, Lei Huanfeng is steep and there is no teleportation array, so it is definitely impossible to go to the enlightenment class outside the peak. However, thinking of this, the leader glanced at his little disciple and couldn't help but smile. This little disciple doesn't seem like a meddler, and he didn't expect to have some interest in this girl. I'll leave this matter to you for resolution. Fulong Zun probably won't notice these details. I had no time to breathe a sigh of relief, afraid that if I meddle in my own business and make Fulong Zun unhappy. After leaving with no time, Yulansi turned around and glanced at the clean and empty room. Fortunately, there were still the necessary large items. So I organized the daily necessities that I had no time to help with. Spread the sheets on the bed, as he knew she was a mortal, Li Doe specially installed several thick cotton quilts for her. Touching this soft quilt, Yulansi couldn't help but want to cry. You are really a good person. In order not to disappoint the kindness of others, Yulansi made two thick blankets and covered one bed. 
just touching it made her want to lie down and not move. Then he put away several pieces of clothing, all of which were white disciple uniforms, and the clothes on both the outer and inner peaks were the same. This is actually different from what Yolansi imagined. I have read several cultivation novels before, and the difference between the inner and outer peaks is particularly significant. Whether it is supplies, clothing, or treatment in all aspects, the outer peak cannot compare to the inner gate. But Tianyang Gate does not have a distinction between inner and outer gates. Although the disciples of Outer Peak have poor qualifications, their resources are good. Although beginners with good qualifications can quickly become apprentices, disciples with good qualifications will bear greater responsibilities in the future. Perhaps this is because the greater the ability, the greater the responsibility. Of course, if the disciples of Yifom work hard, they can still go quite far. After finally putting the things that needed to be placed, Yulansi collapsed directly onto her bed, which was indeed soft and comfortable. Lying down, I don't remember anymore, so I just wrapped myself in a blanket and fell asleep like this. On the other hand, after leaving General Yulansi in the yard, Fu Leng Zun did not actually go far, after all, he had waited for so many years and had already extinguished his desire to accept an apprentice. It turned out that a highly qualified lay-style spiritual root disciple was sent, which naturally brought great joy. But his temperament has always been cold and aloof, and Lei Huanfeng is the only one there all day long. Gradually, he also became less fond of interacting with other classmates and didn't like to go out when there was nothing to do. I don't really like talking, let alone laughing. So although Yulansi may seem cold to him, he actually wants to smile like the leader and doesn't know what to do. After leaving his disciple behind, Fu Leng Zun also felt that perhaps it shouldn't be like this, so he quietly hid behind the strange stone, restrained his breath, and carefully observed his own disciple, perhaps the only disciple in his life. Zheng Gu is probably fourteen years old. Although it's better to start early on the path of cultivating immortality, since you met him at this time, it's also a kind of fate. However, when I saw my disciple sitting on the steps with his arms crossed, I seemed to realize something. She seems very cold. Fulong Zun has long forgotten the taste of coldness, and for a while, he is not sure if it is really cold. At this moment, the proud young apprentice actually arrived. In just a few words, Fu Ling Zun knew where his problem was. Fortunately, the proud disciple was more upright and went to collect items with Yulan Si. However, it also made Fu Leng Zun realize that his disciple was indeed very fragile and even felt cold. Seeing the two of them leave, Fu Leng Zun turned around and returned to his residence. But he didn't settle down as usual, instead he recalled today's events and nodded. I learned something new today. It turns out that there are still so many things for disciples to learn. When he was like the Tianyang gate back then. Thinking of this, Fulong Zun squinted his eyes and his face began to look reminiscent. Then suddenly, I couldn't recall what kind of situation he had when he first started. He seems to have forgotten, forgotten perhaps because he couldn't remember anything, he just stood up and decided to go see if the little apprentice had returned. Walking to the strange stone next to the yard, I happened to see the two of them coming back, and then I watched as I had no time to help take out the things from her storage bag. Fulong Zun looked up and thought about the emerald green ring in Wuxia's hand, which seemed to be something proud of before. Do you think you should also prepare something for your little apprentice? Just as he was thinking he had no time to leave, Fu Leng Zun glanced up at Yulan Si, who was packing things inside the room. With a wave of his hand, a blue lightning net enveloped the entire peak of the Thunder Ring Peak. The cold outside could not enter, and the temperature at the peak began to slowly rise. Watching the young apprentice lying in bed exhausted, he began to go home and help Leng Zun to quietly walk in. The apprentice looks like a small one, with small hands and face, very small everywhere. Unlike a silly kid, he needs to be more delicate and tender, with a childish expression on his face. Inexplicably, there is an indescribable feeling in his heart. Subconsciously, I couldn't help but want to show a father-like smile, 
but because my face was pulled all year round, I couldn't bring out a smile. End of this chapter. Chapter 10. Mantu Gone. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10 Mantu Gone He thought maybe he should go back to practice his smile. When he was about to turn around and leave, he saw several Mantu on the table. Fu Lengxuan could not help but stretch out his hand to touch Mantu, which was already cold. Thinking of whether the apprentice is still a mortal, it seems that mortals need food to survive. But with such coldness, the little apprentice looks very weak. Eating cold food will make him sick, right? Since I am a master, I still need to learn to be accustomed to taking care of my disciples. So he decided to cast magic on Mantu. When the little apprentice woke up and saw that his head was still hot, he must feel the concern of the master. With these words, he grasped a magic decision, turned the power of thunder and lightning into a flame and appeared in the palm of his hand. Then he summoned Mantu and put it directly into the flame. Next second. Mantu became black in an instant, and was burned into ash by the flame in an instant, and wisps of black ash slowly fell on the ground. Fu Ling Zun said. Underscore dot hashtag looking at the black and gray on the ground, I waved my hand and the black and gray disappeared. The ground was clean as if nothing had happened just now. Glancing coldly at the sleeping disciple, he turned around and quickly left. After returning to the room, Fu Ling Zun had a vague concern in his heart. Will the disciple wake up angry? But the disciple doesn't know it was done by himself, so he shouldn't be angry with him. Yulan Si fell asleep and dreamt of herself soaking in a warm hot spring, feeling completely relaxed. She lazily wished she could just hang out in the hot spring like this. But slowly, I realized something was wrong. The hot spring water seemed to be getting hotter and hotter. She struggled to get up, but felt heavy and unable to jump out of the increasingly hot hot spring water. She soon saw the hot spring water start to bubble, shouldn't it be about to open? Isn't she going to be cooked? No, help me as she struggled hard, she only felt her body suddenly hit something, and the next second she suddenly felt cooler. I groped around for a while, then opened my eyes in a daze and felt the hardness under me. I looked left and right before realizing that I had rolled under the bed. Recalling almost being scalded to death just now, I felt like I took a long breath. After getting up, there was still some sweat on my body. I wiped the sweat off my forehead and shook it. Suddenly, I noticed that the room didn't seem as cold as before, and there was still a hint of heat. No wonder she felt very hot when she fell asleep. Not only did she make two thick blankets, but she also covered a thick blanket. According to the current temperature inside the house, it's about the same as early summer. I didn't have time to think about what was going on, but I felt very thirsty. Fortunately, I brought a pot of water when I came back from nowhere. I was afraid of choking when I ate mantu. Picking up the kettle by the bedside, he twisted it open and took a sip, then looked at the table. Where's my mantu? Magnolia thought doubtfully. 3 CS. Mingming's mantu on the table disappeared. She frowned and pondered where she had placed it when she returned. Then he picked up the lighting stone placed on the edge of the bed and searched inside the room, but he couldn't find anything he could find. Her things were already scarce, and there was nothing to hide in the room. So Yulansi sat on the bed and began to wonder whether the Mantu could be his illusion before. In fact, there is no Mantu at all. After sitting for a while, I simply didn't want to think about it anymore. Anyway, there is still Pigu Dan in the storage bag. Just the next second, she suddenly realized that she couldn't open the storage bag, and when there was no breath entering her body, there was no spiritual power in her body. How could she open the storage bag? So is she going to breathe in now? But can anyone tell her how to induce qi into her body? At least give me a cultivation method or reference. At this moment, Yulansi never thought of going to find the so dot called master. After all, Fu Leng Zun left her here and didn't care about her. Obviously, she didn't seem to treat her very well. 
So Yulan Si picked up the messenger jade slip that she had no time to give. Unfortunately, this thing also requires spiritual power to use, so she has no other way now. Simply lie in bed again. She can't do anything, nothing, even if there's something in the storage bag, she can't take it out. Hungry again, Mantu disappeared, and Lei Huanfeng couldn't get out again. Never mind, although you can't do anything, you can still be hungry. Being strong is nothing special. On the first day of her journey to immortality, she was hungry twice. So Yulan Si really can't understand why ordinary people aspire to become immortals so much. It seems that in order to become an immortal, the most crucial thing is to resist hunger. I thought I wouldn't be able to sleep when I was hungry, but after lying in bed for a while, I stumbled upon Duke Sho. The next day when she woke up, she vaguely saw that it seemed to be dawn outside, and Yulansi sat up weakly. I don't feel much hungry now that I've been hungry, but because I didn't eat much at night, I feel weak and powerless. I found a handkerchief to wipe my face and rinsed my mouth with water. After reluctantly tidying up, I touched my hair and found that it seemed a bit oily. Glancing at the kettle, it's not big either. It's definitely impossible to wash hair. I simply tied up all my hair and tied it in a ponytail, and changed into clean clothes. So I sat on yesterday's steps again, and the only thing better than yesterday is that it's not cold anymore. With his face propped up, he looked at the place where Senior Wuxia appeared yesterday, hoping that this great person could appear again. Now she can't go out and her storage bag can't be opened, so she can only wait for someone to come and save her. She feels really miserable as a woman. As a result, I waited until around noon. Without time, Yulan Si slowly landed next to the strange rock not far away. As soon as she saw no time, Yulan Si immediately rubbed against it and ran over. Senior Brother Wu Ming, you have come. Yulan Si looked at the savior and couldn't help but cry. You, junior sister you, what's wrong with you? I was startled by Yulansi's sudden enthusiasm. Then she heard that Yulansi wanted to cry and said that her mantu was missing. After being hungry all night and all morning, she could not help laughing. Why, didn't you bring back mantu yesterday? I didn't have time to see her hair combed and tied behind her head, and her face looked smaller. And the whole person seems to have become much smaller. Really? Does it mean that my Mantu is really missing? When Yulansi heard the goods, she knew that Mantu was definitely not her illusion and must have been brought back. But why did Mantu disappear? Can there still be ghosts if it's difficult? But if there are ghosts in the other peaks, it is unlikely that there will be any in Lei Huanfeng, after all, Lei Huanfeng has a Lei style master in charge. How could it not be seen? Could it be that you ate yesterday but didn't remember? She couldn't help but laugh with a self-doubting expression on her face. I feel that the young junior sister in front of me looks much cuter. Yesterday was still a bit unfamiliar, so there was some estrangement. I packed up yesterday and went to bed. Yulansi was sure that she had not eaten. It must be that Mantu was missing. After thinking for a moment, Yulansi's eyebrows suddenly relaxed and she whispered, Do you think it might have been taken by the master or master? Wuxia was startled and quickly shook his head, saying, No, Master Fulom wouldn't do such a thing. Obviously, he was sure that it was impossible for Fulengzen to do such a thing, but the appearance of Yulansi made him have a picture of Fulengzen quietly taking away Mantu. It's really toxic. End of this chapter